Hey there everyone, my name is Chantel, and in this video tutorial, I'll be going over code coverage. So there might be times where it's difficult to find untested or unused parts of our code, especially since FPGA design is becoming more complex over time, and that could lead to problems in the final product if not detected. So that's where Active HDL's code coverage comes in. It's able to aid us in detecting those unused or untested parts of our code, improving the completeness of the verification process. Now, to be able to get to code coverage, we'll need to open up a workspace and compile a design. We'll be using a sample design for this tutorial. So head on over to help and go to open example. Underneath samples and VHDL designs, we're going to open up frequency meter. Now that we have our workspace open, before we compile, let's head on over to our design settings. And from there, underneath compilation, depending on what language you're using, for this example it'll be VHDL, make sure that enable debug is checked. Once that's checked off, let's head on over to coverage and profiler settings. Over here, we're going to want to make sure that ACDB coverage is checked, as well as all the coverage data that we want. All these different coverage types check different aspects of our code. So statement checks for execution of each HDL statement. Branch coverage checks for if-in-case constructs, as well as VHDL selected and conditional signal assignment statements. Expression coverage factorizes logical expressions and monitors them. And condition coverage is an extension of expression coverage that does the same thing, but for expressions used inside of conditional statements. Assertion defines how many of the specified properties have been covered. This supports only system Verilog and PSL, by the way. Toggle measures the design activity in terms of changes in signal logic values. FSM identifies the not visited states and the not executed transitions or sequences. And lastly, path collects info about the execution of program paths and checks whether all possible sequences of program execution were verified by the test bench. And underneath the main coverage and profile option are different settings for ACDB coverage. You can change the output file settings as well as settings for compilation. In encoding statement coverage, you can decide on whether or not to collect data for all units. And then under expression condition coverage, you could change the mode of expression coverage to control or vector. And then for toggle coverage, you could change its filters and more advanced settings. And lastly, for path coverage, you can change its mode between advanced and cyclomatic, and you could change the settings in those too. So now we can compile our design. Let's make sure we hit compile all. Once we compile everything, now we can head on over to getting our code coverage. So there's two ways that you can get code coverage. One way is by initializing the simulation of top level design and generating the report from there. And then the other way is with a macro file. So we're going to do it the first way. So first, we're going to set this test bench file as our top level. And now we're going to initialize simulation. Once that's been initialized, we're going to run our simulation. Once that's finished, we can now head on over to tools. And we can go to ACDB coverage. You can also go to simulation as well and click on ACDB coverage. It'll generate the same report regardless. And then from there, there's even more ACDB coverage report settings that you could change for yourself. We'll leave everything as is for this case and make sure to have all the coverage types checked off. Once that's done, we're going to hit generate. We can see here in the console that the command line for the ACD read report has been made. And now we can open it. To open it from simulation here, we just go on over to open. And then inside of the frequency meter design, which is located in Aldex Active HDL examples folder, 
underneath frequency meter, we're going to go to this coverage report folder. And underneath, you could see ACDB coverage. Now for the second method, we're going to use a macro file. There's already a macro file made for this example, and all that's need to be done is to edit some of the script lines. It's going to be located underneath testbench, and it's labeled as runme.do. You can see in all of the ACOM lines, we need to have the debug and coverage switches along with the coverage data we want passed as arguments. So in order, each letter stands for statement, branch, expression, condition, assertion, FSM, and path. And it's not on here, but there's also T for toggle. In the simulation command, we add the ACDB switch to enable code coverage collection, followed by ACDB cov with the coverage data we want. Then we have the ACDB file switch with the output file argument so that it saves the coverage. Make sure that debug and advanced data flow are there as well. From there, you can also pass more arguments and switches depending on how you want your code coverage data. Also, we need to make sure that the toggle command is also in our macro file. Otherwise, the toggle coverage will not work. And at the end, we add the ACDB report command. This generates the report based on which ACDB file we passed as an argument. Following that, we add the coverage switch passed with the coverage data we want in the output file. After that, we have the file type argument, which can be either HTML or TXT. And finally, we add the output file's name. Now we can execute the script. You can see the console executing all the lines of our script, and once that's done, you could see how the coverage sessions have ended, as well as the ACDB report generated. We can now open it up from our designs SRC folder. We can't see the coverage data through the ACDB file, so that's why we have the HTML output file. Once opened, you can see the cumulative summary of all the coverage data on the right as well as the entire design and its hierarchy on the left. The coverage percentages in the table encompass all of the files, but on the left you can see the percentages for each individual unit. Clicking on different units of the hierarchy opens up a table summary for that unit, as well as a detailed report for each type of coverage, which changes amongst each coverage type. For example, in the Statement Coverage tab of TestBench, you can see all the executable lines of code for that unit. Clicking on one of the listed lines opens up a statement report to the right. In this report, you can see the number of times a line of code has executed in the hits column. The statements satisfying the coverage conditions are in green, and the ones not satisfying the conditions are in red. Go ahead and look through the rest of the coverage data report and see what else you can find and analyze. And lastly, if you have two ACDB coverage files you'd like to merge together, Head over to Designer Tools and to ACDB Coverage and select Merge. From there, choose two ACDB files you'd like to merge. Give it an output file name and hit that Merge button. And so that ends this tutorial on code coverage. Hope this aids you all well and thank you all for watching.